Here we go. So, you may be wondering why it is that I'm sitting here on Washington DC's busy New York Avenue uh, in all this noise. Well, reason number one is that I finally found a shady spot where I can sit and shoot this video right under a, a nice big tree here. And reason number two is so that I can talk to you about death. My death and possibly yours. And let me see if I can do it before this cigarette runs out. But, um, death. So, you may have noticed uh, I, I posted some videos on Facebook recently. Uh, one of them that I posted yesterday is from about two years ago. And then I posted a video that I made yesterday. And I couldn't help but notice. The video from two years ago, my face looked a lot fuller. Uh, and you, you can see see a, a difference in uh, my weight just looking at my face from two years ago versus yesterday um, so if you're paying attention if you looked at both videos and you noticed uh, the starkly different appearance of me Eric Johnson Sheptock you might say well hey you know looks like a homeboy's dying well I don't know how much longer I have in this world I don't think any of us know just how long we have to live unless maybe you're deathly ill uh, lying on a hospital bed or at home in hospice um, so and I'm not gonna do it before I finish the cigarette I see that but um anyway we don't know how long we have in most instances uh, you could have a car crash tomorrow and be out of here even though you were in good health. Uh, you could have a prolonged illness. Uh, you could think that that illness is going to take you out in the next three months. You could end up living with that illness for a year or two. Uh, there are all sorts of stories. But, you see, there's more than just one type of death, okay? And so, there's the physical, there's social, societal, uh, and that really is what I came here to talk about. Uh, so let's, let's go with uh, societal death. So, a few years ago I read an article. That article was the response or, or in response to a study that was done wherein it, it had been determined that a higher percentage of women are overweight these days because housework is not as labor intensive as it used to be back in oh say the 1800s or even the early 1900s. Uh, When I read that article, I asked myself the question, why would anybody even do that study? Because you know that the information is not going to be well received. I don't care if you prove that fewer women would have weight issues if housework were still as labor intensive as it used to be. I mean, they're going to call you a misogynist male chauvinist pig and a few other things so why even do that study if the information is not going to be well received yesterday uh, Monday August 6th 2018 I read an article in DC's Express newspaper uh, 
It too had to do with information that would not be well received. Uh, but it, it was about a study that had been planned concerning uh, the healthy amount or healthful amount of alcohol to consume. Uh, many of us have heard that one or two drinks a day is actually good for your heart. Well, this article was saying that people were preparing to do a hundred million dollar study uh, to, to prove whether or not one or two drinks of alcohol a day are good for your heart. Uh, the study was called off. And the reason that the study was called off was because they figured, well, heck, you know, uh, there, there's no compelling reason to tell people who don't drink at all that they should start drinking one or two drinks a day. Uh, that information not be well received. And people who, who already drink more than two drinks a day, uh, they're, they're drinking too much and uh, they're probably not going to decrease how much they drink. Uh, so the information is not going to be well received by them either. So they called off the study, said the heck with it, you know. Uh, so I got to give them kudos for saying, wait, it doesn't make sense to put all this money into answering a question, which no matter what the findings are, will not be well received. And the cigarette's almost gone. Uh, so that brings me to a broader point about how there are a lot of things in, in our society, things that we learn that we know to be true beyond the shadow of a doubt, that we just don't pay attention to. The information is not well received. We watched Donald Trump campaign for 17 months. I knew the very first time that I saw him on the campaign trail in June of 2015 that I didn't want to vote this guy in for president. That conclusion held true. Uh, to this day and I do not regret having voted for Hillary Clinton uh, I'm registered as a third party candidate but I can see in hindsight now that those who did vote third party actually threw their votes away because Instead of having Clinton, we now have Trump. And, uh, excuse me, but um, a lot of information is just not well received. When we try, try and tell people, hey, you, you really shouldn't have voted for this guy, even after they see all of his atrocities, they still stand behind their choice. Uh, and I'm sure that there's a, a very long list that we could all put our heads together and come up with concerning various things where we should have known better, but we didn't uh, regard the information quickly enough. There's the 9-11 attacks in 2001. Uh, we had all kinds of information, uh, and we didn't follow through that, on that information quickly enough, and the attack happened, okay? And, or the attacks happened, I should say. And, and uh, so I, as a homeless advocate, I, I find I find myself dealing with that issue, but I should say that I've transitioned from from just talking about information not not being uh, regarded in, into my my next point, which is because this information is not heated soon enough, bad things happen. So. Uh, I find myself in a situation of leading from behind, of, of being the caboose rather than the lead engine, of, of saying, hey, look, I told you so, uh, and, and of prepping people for that moment when I'll say, I told you so. Uh, so as a homeless advocate, as I started to say a minute ago, hey, what's up, man? Uh, I find myself warning folk and saying, look, uh, the CCNV shelter 
that is the Community for Creative Nonviolence Homeless Shelter here in D.C., is right across the road from a major development that could be finished as early as 2023, even though the due date for Capital Crossing is 2025. Uh, so the CCNV shelter, which holds approximately a thousand people, will probably be history by the end of 2022. And uh, there is an occasional violent episode there. Uh, and I personally would say that an occasional uh, violent episode is not reason enough to shut down a thousand person shelter because then for the sake of one or two people, you, you uh, endanger a thousand people. So, so let's not make any rash decisions here. And on top of that, I would also say that all of the acts of violence at the shelter are the result of arguments. They're not random acts of violence. We don't have people just uh, coming up and doing these unprovoked attacks. So as long as you're not arguing with anybody, there's a 99.99% .99 chance that you'll be okay. Um, but that said, you know, it's gonna take four more years before I can say, I told you so before the shelter is completely shut down. And I can let this truck pass me. And, and so, what I need are some shorter, shorter term, I told you so, moments. And maybe if, uh, if I prove to be right on some shorter term, I told you so, instance, then uh, people might say, okay, this guy, really knows what he's talking about and they and they might say okay well let, let me follow his lead you know and, and I hate to say it but it takes these catastrophes to really wake people up and in hindsight I regret that I was not in DC a few years earlier uh, I came to DC in the summer of 2005 I, I just made 13 years uh, I started advocating in the summer of 2006, and uh, the fear from 9-11 had uh, morphed. So I won't say that it went away. We do live in a very fearful society these days, but it had morphed from fear of Al-Qaeda, from fear of government failures around 9-11 into a senseless type of fear where if your line of reasoning concerning something such as your faith, even your Christian faith, if you highlight uh, some of the Old Testament scriptures and even a few New Testament scriptures that support dictatorship or that support uh, eliminating infidels and those who, who preach lies or what have you, then uh, even though all you're doing is pointing out that, hey, the Bible does support these kinds of things. Even though you're not saying, I'm gonna go out and do it, people get afraid. They're afraid because you mention a verse that could be used to support terroristic uh, activities. E even if your behavioral patterns uh, indicate that you're not the kind of person to do that sort of thing. Uh, and so we have all this overblown fear and and we have people suppressing various reasoning mechanisms in the name of fear uh, and not wanting to have certain conversations even, even in a safe space because they fear that even mentioning something like John chapter 3 verse 18 might, might uh, be indicative of you being a terrorist. And that verse, by the way, says he that believeth not is not condemned, but he that believeth, or, 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 or he that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then of course there's the story of Elijah facing off with the prophets of Baal, and then having all 450 of them killed, okay, and a few other scriptures you can bring up to that effect, or scriptures that support the idea of God being a dictator. Um, and, and so, People have an irrational fear, but 
they tend not to learn except in high, hindsight and, and so they put me in a position where I can't advocate and lead uh, by, by saying hey look you know let's fix this problem before it gets out of hand I have to wait until something gets out of hand uh, and during the lead up just tell them hey look you know this is what I see that's about to happen and then once it happens say I told you so uh, and, and I don't want to have to ha wait till there's a very big catastrophic I told you so moment but that's kind of where things are at when you consider how society thinks when you consider uh, Trump and how that many people still support him when when you consider the irrational way in which people's 9-11 fear has morphed when you consider a number of other things about how society thinks then that's just kind of where we're at as a society I don't see it as being something that's focused only on me I don't see it as being focused on any small group any sector of society I think society American society as a whole is at a place where we only learn in hindsight after a catastrophe occurs. So those of us who are aware of this uh, terrible thought phenomenon, we just have to realize that's where people are at and we need to use it to our benefit and to their benefit for that matter. And uh, we need to grab hold of the smaller, uh, less catastrophic situations and use them to teach people about what could happen if they don't join the fight now. And uh, that's a nice segue into my final point, which is this, that now that we have Trump, uh, we, we can somehow uh, muffle his effect by voting blue. Uh, I, I would argue that Democrats and Republicans are just two wings of the same party. I've heard many people say that. I agree. But let's use this uh, multifaceted parties in fighting the Democrats versus Republicans to our advantage. So I'm not saying that they're separate parties. I acknowledge that they're the same capitalistic party. But since they are always doing this infighting which is often referred to as bipartisanship uh, let's use that infighting let's use that democrat versus republican dynamic to lessen the negative effects of trump for the, for the remainder of his term uh, let's hope that he has a heart attack or some other fatal health issue so he doesn't finish his four years and uh, let's think about what, what we want our 46 to be. Do you want our 46 to be Pence? Or uh, are, are you hoping that Trump will kick the bucket from, from a heart attack? That Pence will, will have been indicted by that time? And that will end up with somebody else as president? Who's your 46? But since we see the harm that Trump has done and continues to do, then let's uh, vote blue. Let's vote for the other wing of this capitalist American party. Uh, and, and let's make sure that Trump is not able to push his agenda through at a very fast pace for his, his final two years. And, and uh, like I said, let's hope that it's not uh, the full four-year term. But that said, uh, society is at a place where we only learn in hindsight. Uh, we're, not, we're not analytical enough as a society to predict major problems and avoid them. So everybody, let's just grab hold of these different size catastrophes, especially the smaller ones, and use them to show people that hey, I know what I'm talking about and if you don't listen to what I'm saying now, you're gonna have something worse very soon. All right, goodbye.